Hi, Facebook friends. Uh, thank you for joining me once again. Uh, today, we're in the third week of uh, looking at having a heart like Jesus. And uh, my, my resource that I've used is a book by a guy named Max Lucado, a, a, a wonderful Christian writer. And um, he wrote a book just like him and having a heart like Jesus is what that amounts to. And two weeks ago, we looked at that. And then last week, we looked at having a heart like he has with compassion for others. Uh, in church on Sunday, I shared about uh, having a heart like Jesus, the, the long version, 35 minutes or so, uh, about having a heart like Jesus, the heart of forgiveness. Well, today I'd like to share with you about having a heart like Jesus, uh, a heart of listening, a, a heart of listening to the Father uh, as Jesus did and, and how important that is for us. If we're going to be like Jesus, we need to have a heart that listens, uh, not only uh, to him, but listen for him and listen to him through his word, um, through prayer, um, through that still small voice that I believe God uses in our lives. Um, Jesus thought listening was very important because he said these words, the son does nothing apart from the father. Um, I only do what my father has done. I only say what my father has said to, to say. And so he shares the fact that he's been listening for his father and he's been listening to his father. And so for you and I uh, to be Christ-like, um, as God, as Max Lucado says, as God loves us just the way we are, uh, but he refuses us, uh, refuses to let us stay that way. Uh, he says, we, he calls us to be like Jesus. So, um, yep, God does love you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way. Um, he wants us to be like Christ. And so we need to listen um, to him. Uh, listen for him. Uh, the listening for him part, I think, has sort of gone out of vogue in many places in the Christian community. Um, there are people that I believe on Sunday morning, they come and they hear me. But I pray, I pray that they're listening for Jesus. Um, I really don't think they want to hear me. I really don't think they, they, they want that humanness. Oh, they, they, they might engage with some of the things I'd say, but, but I think in reality, you folks, as you watch now, Aren't you really wanting to listen for the Lord and, and what he has for you? And so we listen for him. Uh, when you read your Bible, we should just ask the Lord, Lord, would you point out in this scripture today what I'm going to read? Um, I want to hear your voice in that. I, I want you to speak into my life for that and, and invite him to do that. The same with our prayer time. Lord, I, I want you to, I, I, I want to hear you. I want to listen to you as much as I want to give you my, my laundry list of needs and wants and but my thanksgivings and praises as well. And I want you to hear all that, but I want to hear from you. I believe, again, although it may not be so culturally um, acceptable, I believe God still speaks in a still small voice, that he speaks into our lives, that he uh, uh, speaks to us as we, as we listen for him. Um, and then when we listen for him and we believe we've heard him then to, to do what he says to do. Oftentimes, what that'll do for us is to point out whether we heard him or we heard our own things. Um, sometimes we don't listen so well for Jesus because the world has bombarded us with so much. That's just the world. Uh, sometimes we don't listen for him because we have our own wants and wishes. And we have a pretty good idea what he would say. Um, and we, we really don't necessarily want to do what he has for us. Uh, so we don't always listen for him, but I want to encourage you this day to, to listen for the Lord. I believe again, again, he still speaks. Um, let me give you two illustrations out of, out of our church setting at, at Wesley. Uh, oftentimes after the sermon, uh, I'll sit down in the first row and I'll, I'll ask the Lord, how do you want me to lead in prayer today? Where do you want me to go with that? Uh, and there's times I believe that I've heard the Lord say to me, Blake, you need to invite someone to share. They have a word for us, for you today. Uh, or he'll say, there's someone that has need in this place and, and announce that. Let them know that, that we're, we care for them. And, and, and my goodness, there's been times that people have responded. When I've said there's someone here that has a word for us, I, I heard, I believe I heard the Lord right. And I was listening for him and, he, and these people stood up and they spoke and they shared and it was powerful for what we were doing. Um, there's times I, I said, I felt like I needed that. The Lord said to me, give them your phone number so they can call. And I did that. And and people called in, the live stream people called in and, and I prayed with them and shared with them. And 
Um, now, I got to be honest with you. Got to be honest. There's times I thought I heard the Lord and I offered something and no one responded. Um, I offered and, and, and said, I believe the Lord has this for us. And, and there was nothing. And, and I don't know if that was whether God was just seeing if I'd be faithful, uh, and I'll continue to be faithful even when the responses don't come. Um, or honestly, maybe some people in the congregation heard the Lord and they just didn't respond to it. But again, I believe as we press on, and I don't mean to be super spiritual about this, I think he still speaks to everybody. You ought to say amen right there. Uh, I still speak, think he speaks to all believers and, uh, and, and he wants to speak into our lives. And so we need to listen for him. And then after we hear him, we need to listen to him, uh, what he says and carry that out to, to what he has for us. When he calls us to forgive, and we know that. Uh, when he calls us to minister, and we know that. We need to step out and be faithful. When he calls us to speak little and listen much, we, we need to be responsive to that. Um, so we need to listen for him and to him. And what that does, it makes us more and more um, like Jesus. Let me, let me give you an illustration uh, how that may work. Uh, as a kid growing up at Memorial Church, um, we had dear, dear family friends, uh, the Longs, um, three sons, uh, Mike, uh, Mitch, and Marshall. And uh, Mike, the oldest son, great friend of mine through through school and church. And um, he went to Virginia Tech. Uh, after a year, he married his high school sweetheart. They continued three years at Virginia Tech and he got his degree and they moved to Fort Worth, Texas. And he worked for an aerospace company down there. And um, his bride, uh, Donna, Donna Bracken Long, um, when she lived in Virginia, uh, and then in, in Fort Worth, Dallas, uh, Texas area, when she'd visit, I noticed the first year or two, she, she sounded a little more Southern. Um, and then after 10 or 15 years, she sounded a lot more Southern. And in recent years, she's she has a beautiful Southern accent. And, and each time I think about that, it, it makes me smile because... Donna has surrounded herself with church family uh, from the South, and she sounds like them. She had work folks that, that sounded, uh, had a Southern accent, and she spoke like them. And and so it, it, it made me realize what we surround and who we surround ourselves with and who we're listening to and listening for can can affect our, our accent. It happened in scripture as well. Um when Jesus was arrested and taken inside, um, Peter stood outside. He stood at a distance uh, and he was challenged. As you know, that story three times about being with Jesus and who he was. And, and, and Peter, as Jesus had said, he would denied him, denied him. And, and a third time denied him. And, and, a, and a person said to him, but your accent gives you away. You're one of them. You're a Galilean. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but my point of that is Donna's accent left us know where she was from. Peter's accent left us know that he was a Galilean, that he had been with Jesus. Oh, my goodness. How I pray that my accent, people will know that, that I've been listening for Jesus and I've been listening to him. The way I speak, the words I share. A little bit later in God's word in the book of Acts, uh, Peter, that one who denied him three times, oh, how the Holy Spirit transformed his life. Uh, Peter became very, very bold for Jesus. And he stood before the religious leaders and boldly proclaimed Christ as Savior and Lord. They were amazed about that as he and John, that's Peter and John, shared that word that day. Because as they stopped, as they listened to these, here's what scripture says. They noted their boldness and that these men were ordinary and unschooled, but they made note that they had been with Jesus. Oh, how I hope that's my case as well, dear friends, that you and I would listen and we would listen for him and we would listen to him, that others around us might look upon us and say, not only do we have his accent, but that we've been with Jesus that we have spent time with him because we have a heart like him. So today, I simply want to encourage you. Would you listen for him? He still speaks. Would you listen to him? And I pray that I might continue to, to do the same. And I pray that maybe this message today right here was for you to hear, that you have been listening for Jesus 
and that you're hearing him. God bless you all. Have a great week in him.